Coming up on Saturday, June 17th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Chicopee Public Library will be the site for a volunteer training session hosted by Horizons for Homeless Children. That's a statewide organization that works to make life better for kids living in shelters. I sat down with the Play Space Program West Regional Director at Horizons for Homeless Children to learn more about what they do. We want to make sure we create an environment inside of the family shelter that is kid-friendly and um, trauma-informed and ready for the kids to go in and, and just be themselves. We'll talk in a minute about how you do that and what's involved, and it's your organization plus you need volunteers and you train volunteers, and we'll talk about that, but I was struck by one bit of information I found at the Horizons for Homeless Children website. Homeless kids have twice the rate of learning disability three times the rate of emotional or behavioral disorders as a kid who's growing up in a more, whatever we call normal, mm -hmm. structured home. They know they're coming home too mm -hmm. every day after school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the children living in the shelter are living in this toxic stress environment. So they're constantly in this fight or flight mode. So when you're feeling like that, you can't let your guard down to just relax, enjoy, play. Um, so the children are always have this guard up. Um, the point of our program is to have our volunteers, who are the core of our program, come in and play with the kids, build their self-esteem, um, give them chances to be successful, teach them how to play, be patient with them, um, build up their confidence so that when they do enter school, they'll be more at the same rate of their house peers. And it's a family-based program because, as you said, you know, if, if the kids are stressed. Yeah. Of course, the parent or parents they're with they're going through a lot too. They, they've they've lost everything. They're stressed, so they're not there for the kids in the way they'd want to be or that we'd hope a parent could be. And that's the other part to our program is that it allows the parents an opportunity for a break. I know me as a parent, I have three children at home. I know how hard it is to make a phone call, to have a serious conversation, to cook dinner, to do any of those things. So that time that our volunteers are there allows the parents to meet with their case managers, make the phone calls I need to make, take a shower by themselves, just these little breaks so that they have a little bit of self-care. So when they are back with their parents, we're fostering that relationship with them as well. Take a minute and tell us, because I know you have upcoming programs where folks who tell you they're interested in volunteering come in and find out about your organization, yep. Get, get a little uh, familiarity, get a little training, really, to, and, and you each look at each other and see if this is going to be a good match. That's exactly it. So we have a training May 6th, and we have another one June 17th. And at that those trainings, we get to know our volunteers. Um, certainly, we want to know their uh, personality types. And we also talk to them about the journey of homelessness, the impacts it had on the children, the impacts it had on the parents. and. That's why we have so many procedures and rules and boundaries in place. Um, we talk a lot about trauma-informed care and the intentionality of our play and how we set up our rooms so that it's best designed um, to create an environment that will be successful for both the volunteers and our children. So it's a pretty intense three hours. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it is. Let me ask you about that a little bit. I know you've got shelter-based play spaces mm -hmm. and I think about 100 or 120 yep. shelters for the homeless around the, the region, and they're designed to reflect the needs of a child experiencing trauma. Mm -hmm. What's, I mean, I see a play space yeah. and I think, well, <laughs> that's what it is, but what, what's that about? What, what can so you tell us? So some of the things that we do make sure that are in all of our play spaces, um, very, very neutral colors, so we don't want a lot of big, bold, bright colors, just wood, green, natural colors. We don't want any open runways in the playroom, so every, every area of the playroom is very well defined, so when a child enters that area, they know exactly what to do. There's no confusion. Oh, I'm sitting here, this is the kitchen and the food and the dress up, I'm going to play house or whatever it is. Um, and we also, another huge thing that we make sure that we have is the same toys and the same in the programs and everything is labeled. So that way when a child enters the room, there's no confusion. My favorite truck is going to be here at this spot every single time. In an average week, you serve over 2,000 kids. Mm -hmm. That's statewide, yep. This is a big problem. It is, it is. Um, young families are the fastest growing segment of the homeless population right now. Um, also, the average age of a homeless person is eight. And in Massachusetts alone, we have uh, 16,000 children under the age of six. So if you think about what that means for your community, in your classrooms, in your churches, one out of 30 children is experiencing homelessness. So that's pretty significant. There's a great statement again at the website. Every child has the right to joyful play experiences. It seems like a no-brainer. But again, if a kid's not in that regular 
home situation, that's the first thing that disappears. Yep. Yeah, so when they come in, a lot of the kids don't know how to play or they're too afraid to let their guard down to play. So there's a lot of work on our volunteers' end to just be calm and ready. And sometimes our volunteers just have to sit down on the floor and play by themselves until that child will engage with them. So we, we literally are teaching children how to play at times. I know one of the things you have, again, being statewide in the eastern part of the state, it sounds like it'd be great here, but it, yeah. it's like anything else, not easy to do, early education centers. You're trying to close the learning and developmental gap. That can be a factor for a kid for any number of reasons, but again, when they're out of a home environment, <clears throat> that's <clears throat> the biggest problem maybe that comes up right away. They're just not, <clears throat> excuse me, able to compete with the kid coming from the home situation. That's exactly it. So we provide wraparound services for the families. We get them into our early education centers, um, and then when they're ready to go on to um, the public school system, we help that transition. And if the family becomes housed during the time that they're with us, we also help them get into child care. Joanna Burby, Play Space Program, West Regional Director, Horizons for Homeless Children. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.